So, let's address this on a superficial level and then let's go deeper. Well, you asked for the, for the, I agree. For yeah, the scriptures. I agree. So, yeah, so that, that's no, that's the scriptures. So, I, that's the thing that, yeah. excuse me, that monotheists will, will struggle with because although the Deuteronomy says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, <laughs> the, um, no the, the other phrases in there uh, lead to there being something else about God that's not revealed in that Do you want one. To come that and that one, the word is Echad, which Echad. also says in um, Genesis. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. A man shall leave his uh, mother and father and marry his wife, and the two shall become echad. Echad, yeah. What one? That that one. So two people can become one. So that word echad in Deuteronomy doesn't mean that there's no room for a trinity because we have other phrases that say Yahweh called down fire from Yahweh in heaven. Uh, Yahweh received a report from Yahweh. There's many uh, passages, and I don't know them off, off the top of my head, where the, the the person talking is clearly God. Uh, but then talks about another person who created. Okay. Go. So, so, so there's mm. lot, lots of things in, in the Bible, mm. in the Old Testament, that would uh, cause these problems for, for Unitarians. And then when you go to the New Testament, you've got John straight away, which says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, through him all things were made. Mm. It says in, in the, um, the letters that, I um, can't remember what one it is, sorry, but it says that God took flesh to himself and entered his creation and for, for a, uh, a while become lower than the angels. Philippians, yeah. yeah. So, so this is the hypostatic union. This is God entering into his creation. This is why he says, my father is greater than I, because if you look to what he says about John the Baptist, he says, of all men born on earth, John the Baptist is the greatest, yet even the lowest in heaven is greater than he. So in the greatness that Jesus is talking about, he's talking about the, the glorified greatness. So that's why he says when he returns to his father, in the glory he had before the world was begun. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Right. So, so th there's all that, that, that's all the scripture stuff. Okay, let's break that down. Part of it. Part no, of, it. of course, <laughs> no problem. Yeah, no problem. Let's break that down. On the superficial level, and then we're going to go into the deeper level. We quote Genesis 19, 24. Genesis 19, 24. If we were to read it on a superficial level, you have two, not three. Yeah. You have two, not three. Exactly. Right? You have two. Yeah, no, sorry, yeah, you mentioned, yeah. You have the mention of, yeah. So, so the best you can get from that verse on a superficial level is that there's two, not three. Okay? So there's a physical who visits the creation. Yes. And then there's the great. Uh, yeah. Got, uh, but the God thing God. is, we, let's look, but now let's go on to a deeper level. Let's look at the overall context because it starts in Genesis 18, 1, right? Where they visit Abraham. And in Genesis 19, they are identified as angels. The reason why we see three Yahweh men, it? Three, three, three so, so in, in Genesis 18, when, yeah, when, three men. When but in 19, walking, he's walking with God. So yeah, because, it mentions. He says to yeah, God, it mentions three men. If, if I find 50 virtuous people there, mm -hmm. will you not destroy it? Yeah. And, and God says, yeah, for the sake of the 50, I will not destroy it. And then he gets down to where he gets to, to, to lots. To lots, yeah. So, so this is God he's talking with. The conversation. No, no, no. This is what it says in the scripture. No, it's, 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 it's actually not because. In, in Genesis 18, they are identified as men, whereas in Genesis, and then towards the end of Genesis 18, we are told that, well, we, are, we, we know that one was uh, sent to heal Abraham, one was sent to uh, announce the birth of Isaac, and one was sent to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So when we come to Genesis 19, 24, the one that was, you know, um, destroying Sodom and Gomorrah was one of those men, okay, which we know is an angel. And the, the other one is God himself. So you actually have God, uh, well, the angel acting on behalf of God. Hence why we know about the concept of the two thrones, theophany and the angel of the Lord, right? This is actually a key text that is used in the study of the subject of the, thro the theophanies and the uh, angel of the Lord. You know about the convention, uh, when they write Lord, this is Yahweh. Yeah, all capitals uh, and the Lord and Yahweh. I understand, but Yahweh, Yahweh is not unique to God. It is used for the angel of the Lord as well. No, no that this is where the confusion, some people have confusion with the angel of the Lord. No, but so the it's title. Try, trying to say that it's the angel of the no, Lord, no, the, it's not God himself. Yeah, the title, the title of the angel of the Lord, 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 Lord yeah, yeah. can be, can be, uh, Yahweh can be used as that, right? No, no, no. Yes. No, no. So some people have tried to argue that, but Yahweh mm. is the is the unique name that uh, God identifies. Okay. Have you? It's the only name. Are by you which aware? You know, that's know fine. God. Are you aware of the Yahwist and the Elohist traditions? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, and the P, the priestly. The, tradition, the priestly uh, traditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Which no, are, I like you. It's rare when we have a conversation on this level. I like it. But they've never been proven, have they? There's no one text that anyone can find that say, ah, this is Yahweh's and we can prove these Yahweh's will incorporate. Well, actually, in the book of Genesis in particular, it, it can be due to the doublet and the triplets that, uh, triplet stories that we see. This is where we have, Genesis. yeah. That's why it's particular to Genesis. Uh, hence why we have this, this, this separate, the, the, you can distinctly see the two traditions. But um, this, is why I'm, this is why I have an issue with the, the, type, the name Yahweh, right? And, and I lean towards this, not because I want to falsify. If that was the name of, God, of the one true God given to Israel, I have no issue with it. But the evidence doesn't support that. Um, in, in, well, the Jews won't use it. The Jews, the Jews, the Jews don't. The, just say Hashem. Yeah, the but the Jews don't even know but, what but the they, name they, is. They know there is a one sacred name because they have it in the But temple. they don't know it's Yahweh. But well, they don't know the pronunciation. They, no, they don't even know the Tetragrammaton because the, exactly. the thing is they lost the entirety of the Torah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, so, so but, but, but the tradition, because obviously there was some temple priests, some temple Jews who would have known that. Uh, uh, the, that is the, an the assumption. Role, the role of yeah. the. Um, the, the, the high priest yeah. would have been to, to say the name in, in, the, in the, uh, the inner sanctum. But if that was the case, creation of it. Because it was only for, for the priests. Yeah, only, but only the priest, the high priest. Yeah, but the priestly tradition continued until the second temple. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. And the second temple was destroyed just after Jesus. I agree. Yeah. But at no point in history do we ever ever have anything that come you know that where we can indicate that there is. That, that that name Yahweh was ever said by the temple priest. Because if, you, if no one knew the name except him, then we, we can't have any uh, external verification to that name. So Yahweh being the name, considering we don't even know it, the Tetragrammaton in of itself, without the vowelization, we can't know that it's the name because the Torah in its entirety was lost. Now they had, to, they had a scripture, and this is where, now I'm gonna bring in the Quran, which is interesting because the Quran actually mentions that the Jews, in the, you know, in betraying the covenant, some of them, okay, forgot the scripture, and some of them have written a scripture. There's two interpretations of this. One is that they have taken the Torah and corrupted it, and another interpretation, and both are correct, by the way. And there's another uh, interpretation is that they wrote a scripture and claimed it to be God from God, and that's what we see in the history of the. Old, uh, that's what we see in the scripture, that the Torah was lost, and that they, but they still had a book that they refer to. So from looking at that history, I can see where Yahweh emerged from, considering they were in the wilderness and among the Canaanites and the pagans. Now, this is not to say that Yahweh is a pagan name, even though I do lean to that. I'm not gonna make the claim. But there is an interesting uh, history there where you had the, the tablets that were given to Moses, which we believe were the originals, right? That because we, for, for us, we have a hadith which mentions that Allah himself scribed the Torah on the tablets and sent them in one go down to Moses, right? And Moses was on the mountain for 40 days. So that, those tablets, we say that is the Torah. The scriptures and the scrolls that came afterwards, we do not claim them to be the original, okay? They may have started off being faithfully copied and everything, but as, as the time progressed in the wilderness, something happened. Allah gives us, tells us what has happened, but not in the details. So, so what were the Jews doing all this time? Surely they had, like, like you Muslims, they had oral tradition. Well, that's, the, that's, alive. that's you know, the funny, the temple priests, I like this. There would, yeah. have been, there would have been schools to teach people the stories. And there's evidence that some of the stories were retold yeah. slightly yeah. different because when that was written down, you get like two yeah. versions yeah. or something. Look, we are not saying that there was a complete loss of the, the scripture and the history and everything. Even ourselves, we don't make that claim. We say that there is something, even today, that we can say this is true yeah. within the scriptures. I what we are, the Ten Commandments, you're saying? No, 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 other aspects, you know, in oh, terms right. of the prophets, yeah. Yeah, aspects of the stories of the prophets, you know, but uh, for us, the criterion is the Quran, right? Because we believe Allah is the author of the Quran, therefore him being the primary witness to those events, he will tell us what is true, as opposed to what the scriptures are, as has been handed down. Now, uh, what was I gonna say, SubhanAllah? Yes, the tradition, the oral tradition and the passing of the Torah. The interesting thing is, is that this tradition didn't show up until after Islam. The Jews learned that the Muslims had the tradition of the Isnad. Because when you look at the, 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 um, the Samicha, which is the chain of narration, right? the Samicha is the chain of narration of the Jews. You don't find that historically. You only find that after the advent, the advent of Islam. And even when you look at the Samicha with regards to the, the transmission of the Torah, there is hundreds of years gaps between so them. The, the, I have it with the, me, I'll show it. Yeah, show it inshallah. 
the, the tr traditions and, and all that of mm. uh, passing down down things and the chains of narration. Yeah. You said it come from this rabbi who gave it to this rabbi. Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I can understand all that, but mm. the actual uh, Torah and prophets, the law and the prophets and the writings. Same thing. Uh, well, we've got, we've got the book of, uh, sorry, we've got Dead Sea Scrolls, which show, um, uh, what one is it, Isaiah? Um, yeah. And, and that's over 2,000 years old. Yeah, the Great Isaiah Scroll. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so that there's, there's... Which is different. There are differences between, there, there, yeah. There'll always be differences, because you've got to remember, other mm. people didn't have this thing that, that Islam has. Mm. Islam says it must be word for word, dot for dot, yeah. you know, it's got to be absolute. Yeah. Other traditions didn't have it to, to, to that degree. That, that they said you, you, it was more about the message that God's bringing you, well, not necessarily the written word. I think that this is something that is um, that has come about in the last hundred years or so when textual crit criticism started to pick up. Because prior to that, the belief was that this is the verbatim word of God. No, no, I'll prove you wrong. Go on, One of our church fathers, uh, Saint uh, Augustine of Hippo. Yeah. Um, he was writing in the, in the fourth century, I think yeah. it was. Um, and in that time, there was no atheists, there was no Muslims, there True. was no uh, scientific things or anything. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a commentary on Genesis. And he said, yeah. if I find something written in the word that is absurd, when, when, you, when you look at it rationally, then I must believe that it points to something else. Yeah, so, so this was a church father right? And what he's saying, we must believe the word is written because it's there in the book, but it does, it's not the, the literal uh, translation we look for. We look for what, what it points to. Because That's a different claim. On, That's a different claim. Well, well, because for me, the claim is that the text is verbatim. It is God's word, right? Because the inspiration... It's the, the message that... No, that, there's a difference between God's word as it's, as it's scribed and the message, right? The, yeah, the, the yeah, meaning. That, that's what I'm saying. It's different between Islam... Sorry, and, I'll bring it in a bit, yeah. Because Islam says so it's, it's the, the text that, that is, is absolutely preserved. Yeah. And then from that, you can, you can take what we say in Judeo-Christian uh, tradition is it's the message, it's the, the salvation history that God yeah. is showing all the way from Genesis 3, 3.16 when yeah. it says um, the, the seed of the woman so, will come back and crush the head of the snake. Yeah, 3.15, right Genesis 3.15. Right 15. at the beginning of Genesis. Mm. And what we call that leading on, all the, this is why they, they're so big on genealogies, all these ones going through, it's because that's the whole of salvation history mm. of, of God's plan. Oh God. I've got something to say about the, 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 the chain of salve, the, the salvific genealogy, but I don't want to digress again, too far. Again, that don't have to be perfect. It, because, because it's, the well, it thing, does. It's a genealogy. I mean, no, no, you no. Know. The important thing is that God has chosen. What was it? Hezekiah? Can't remember. Who was the one that was cursed in the genealogy? Uh, Joachim. Jo uh, yeah, Joachim. Yeah, Joachim. Conveniently, I think Matthew omitted out. He did omit it, yeah. Genealogy. Yeah. But, but anyway, look. Uh, like I said, I don't want to digress because it's, it's hard though when... It's, it's, yeah, it's, there's it's, so much to talk about. Yeah. I do appreciate it. Yeah. So, um, it's a good conversation though. I'm no, I love it. I, 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 I love it as well. Yeah, this is a brilliant conversation. Yes. And like I said, it's rare when we can talk on the same level. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> I, I enjoy it so much. I, I appreciate your time. What's someone, your name, by the way? Someone is Vince. Vince. Vince yeah. My name is Mohammed. Mohammed. Nice. Rahan. Yeah. Rahan. Rahan. That's yeah. me. So, yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah, so in terms of the text of the Torah, this is what we are referring to. Allah mentions in the, the Quran, yuharrifuna, right? Now this word has two connotations, the textual tradition and the, uh, the meaning, right? So the text and the meaning. Allah is telling us that both have been changed, right? And we see evidences in, in, the, in the Torah and, and in, in, the, yeah, and in the New Testament, right? The, the, the Injil. So, and we see this because... Um, where does he say that, just, just out of interest? Because so I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with the yeah. where he says they will twist it on their lips. Yeah. So as they preach, yeah, yeah. they yeah, will yeah. preach the wrong thing. That, that, that the, yeah. the, the, the text, the story mm. is still there, but they will interpret Preached. and twist it on yeah. their lips. So like I said... The so where's, where's the bit where the text is twisted? It's in, it's in chapter 2, verse uh, 75 to 79. And in chapter 5, verses 13 to 14. What does it say? Okay. Min yeah. yeah. So, okay, a lot. English? Yeah, no, we, we're going to translate. No, because for us, it's always going back to the Arabic. That's the miracle of yeah. the Quran, man. Yeah. You memorize yeah. it. See, so, yeah, I would call that a disadvantage because if, if you wanted to convert me to Islam, no, we'll, first I've got to learn Arabic. No, before I can no, test. that's not true. Well, I've got to test it because my religion says test. Yeah. So, so I've got to test it, so I'd have to learn Arabic. But no, but there is a test for the non Arabs. Whereas, yeah. whereas in uh, the, uh, at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles and gave them the, the power to speak in all languages. So yeah. that everyone can hear the word of God in, in the language that your mother spoke to you when she nursed you at the breast. That's the language you can yeah, hear. Yeah, but word the thing is, the, the. I can't hear the word of God unless I le learn Arabic. No, that's not true. That's not true. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a challenge for the Arabs. 
and made a challenge for the non-Arabs. The challenge for the non-Arabs was, if you believe that this is from only one other than God, surely you will find within it contradictions and errors. This is something you can do, right? Well, Christians would say that, that there are. That's fine. Yeah. We, look, it's a, you know, me and Rayhan, we've done this a thousand times. Doesn't right? so, say also that, that Satan cast in some things and that he, he tried to. Them? No, he tried to. But whenever Satan tried to do this, Allah abolished it. This is in Surah to Hajj, uh, chapter 22, verse 52. But, but, so so is, is these are these abolished ones in the Quran? Or no, not? they're not in the Quran. And, and so for example... What are the ones that Allah made better? Because it says he will make... Similar. He, he, he was similar or better. Or better, yeah. So we, we know this because if, in, the, in the Hadith tradition, we know which um, verses or even chapters have been abrogated so the, from the, the Quran. The Hadith tells you. The Hadith tells you, you because... That means then you have to rely on the, your chain. The, yeah, so yeah, yeah. because obviously okay. the people who transmitted the Quran, they are the same people who transmitted the Hadith, right? Um, at least in the first, in the early centuries, right? In the first three generations. Um, so the Hadith tells us the history, gives us the context of the Quran and the explanations of the Quran from the lips of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his companions. Uh, but the Quran is the verbatim word of, of Allah, right? So we go to the Quran first and the ambiguous verses, as Allah says in the Quran in chapter 3, verse 7, uh, there are some verses that are explicit, need no interpretation. There are some which are ambiguous and then in other aspects, parts of the Quran, it mentions uh, that, the, that the Prophet Sallallahu he is to explain these verses to them, right? And then there are, there's another category of verses which no one knows the meaning of except Allah. There's 29 of them. So even that, we know which verses they are. They are the muqatta'at like Alif, Lam, Mim, you know, the, the first verse in, sort of in chapter 2, Alif, Lam, Mim, you know, or Noon, you know, so, or, or Sa'ad, or Yasin, all of, so these like uh, disjointed letters, those verses are the ones that have a meaning, but on, the only one that knows their meaning is Allah. So those are the three different why, types of why verses. Why reveal that though? Hmm? Why reveal that? If, if, if I'm going to reveal something yeah. to you, but then not tell you what it means, what, hmm. why reveal that? This is actually part of the miracle of the Quran, right? Because in the Arabic language, you have to remember the reason why we claim that the Quran is in Arabic, uh, an Arabic, uh, a linguistic miracle, is because it came with some, with an Arabic that did not exist before. It completely destroyed the Arabic language, yet remained co uh, comprehensible, understood, uh, was pr uh, uh, the, those the most eloquent. No, no, even that, understood. even that. Yeah, yeah, but then I just said they're not understood. No, I'm talking they're about the scripture. Oh, I'm talking about the scripture. Yeah, yeah. Totally. It's totally. Yeah. But, but that's the thing I find confusing is that, you know, this, yeah. like you said, this, this miracle of revelation, mm. but it's parts of it that are not revealed. Yeah, 29. And yet, yet they're written down. Yeah, 29 verses. It leads me to my sort of big bang question with, with the whole of, of Islam is mm. why? What was God's plan then? If, if Jesus yeah. wasn't crucified, he's allowed this big religion of Christianity to grow up mm -hmm. to be diametrically opposed to Islam, mm -hmm. but, but, but why? Surely God, Allah, God's ambition is to bring everyone to Him. Naturally, that's what, that's what yeah. it tells us. But this in is, the Old Testament but see, this is, a, but this is the thing. Allah does, doesn't leave mankind alone. In the Quran, it mentions about the Hawariyun, the disciples, and it documents to us that the disciples, not by name, and not by, we don't claim that there's twelve only. But there's not a number in Islam, but it mentions the disciples, and it mentions that they understood, right? Because like I said, it mentions the Last Supper. And it documents what happened at the Last Supper. Nothing about the crucifixion, nothing about the Eucharist. But it mentions that Allah says, um, uh, the, the disciples ask Isa alayhi salam, they say, give us a sign. And Allah sends down to them a table of food. This is why it's called Al-Ma'idah, right? Al-Ma'idah means the table. So this is referring to the Last Supper. Al-Ma'idah of food, right? Okay? It was going to send down a table of food. And, and after this, if you disbelieve, in Jesus, right, in Allah, then He will punish you like He has never punished any of His creation. Right, this is the message and this is the purpose of the Last Supper. It's for the, this is it, this is the de facto sign. I've not, I've not seen that sign, so for me, no, no, no. it's still yeah, but the crucifixion, I, I, the look, that's fine, that's fine. What I'm saying to you is that the Quran answers to this. And it mentions about the Hawariyun that they did not actually believe. So they believed in, in Jesus' peace be upon Him. And they were certain of it. This is why it mentions in the chapter 4, verse 150, sir, 57, that those who deferred were in conjecture. Now, when we read in the New Testament, all the disciples, they didn't defer. In fact, they were all united upon the fact that Jesus never rose. They, that wasn't the reaction. 
they were unified they in that. They yeah, they needed convincing they and they were shocked, they yeah, were surprised. Yeah, yeah. So it shows, so and subhanAllah, Allah makes it makes that distinction between the disciples who had no conjecture, no disagreement between them and the rest of the Christians that say either Barabbas or was it Simon of Cyrene that carried the cross? What happened to the Pharisees? Was it, um, why would Pilate um, release Barabbas when he's a, Roman, uh, a rebel to the Roman Empire? And all of these questions and the Christian community that tried to tell in different ways and attributed the substitution theory. That's where the conjecture we see in the Christian world, but not with the disciples. So for certainly not, they did not kill him. For certainty, they caused that the disciples were certain in their faith in Jesus. And we do not see any Thing. But, but the, the disciples, I mean, Peter, Peter was, was the chief apostle, okay? And yes. you, you look at everything that Jesus does, he calls Peter, uh, John, John and James. Yes, you know, But always Peter first. Yeah. And Peter went out and preached Christ crucified. The other apostles pre preached Christ crucified. Uh, as a Paul was the later apostle. Mm. Paul comes later. A lot of people get confused and think Paul was one of the head apostles. He wasn't. He no, he wasn't. Later on yeah. the road to Damascus. Yeah. He has a vision of Christ. He preaches Christ crucified as well. So all of them, that, that's what I'm saying, if this is wrong, how could Allah allow this body of, of people to go out there and corrupt the whole world and not yeah. send a, a corresponding prophet to say, in, it, they're lying to you. In the same way that Allah allowed uh, allowed the Jews to corrupt their scripture, right? And the Christians to corrupt the scripture. Because Allah- but the Jews uh, look, were following the covenant. I mean, no, they, they, yeah. made, they made done bad things. Yeah, but Allah, you know, look, so but, Allah- But it was the covenant yeah. given, so given the, to them. Yeah, but yeah, the, so it was, wasn't wasn't a false covenant, was it? No, it was. Look, we're not it saying it's a false. Covenant. Yeah, it's a true covenant, but it was. I was corrupted. With the Christians, you're saying it's, it's a false covenant we're we're following because it's wrong because Jesus was never crucified. Yes. So, so our covenant is based on 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 the the crucifixion and the resurrection. The yeah, sacrifice. which was taught to you by other than Jesus. Yeah. So so, so we're, we're following what we believe to be the covenant. Yeah, I, just like the Jews yes. were following their covenant. Yeah. So why did Allah not stop us from following that that covenant? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He allows us to exercise our free will. Yeah, if Allah was going to stop uh, the covenant, he would have stopped everything, right? Allah can, if he wanted to, he can stop all the evil in the world. That, but that's Allah... why you say he sent Muhammad to, to correct things. But, but yes. Muhammad was in Arabia. Yeah. It wasn't effective with, with all the, the Christianity going on in the, in the hence, Roman hence, Empire. And now we circle back to those three categories of Christians. Those who stayed upon the message, did not deviate from the message. Those who corrupted it willingly and knowing it's, it, they were transmitting falsehood. And those who, who simply followed what they knew. Right? And didn't know, were not any wiser. So Allah is not unjust. Yeah? He allowed the people to, he allowed the people yeah. to do what they will, but he ensured that there is justice among the people. Right? So when Muhammad came, came uh, to all of mankind, and the Quran, even though it's, it's in Arabic, he came to the Arabs. He came for all of mankind. For all of mankind. For right. all of mankind. To, to the Arabs. Yeah. So, so no, he came, he, he came among the Arabs. He came, the he came Arabs from among the Arabs this small for mankind. Area that had very little chance of, of overcoming the bigger areas. You know, God, God when, when Jesus comes, but, Jesus comes yeah. in the middle of the biggest empire yeah. of the time. And it was actually because it was part of that big empire that the word spread so quickly because you had all these. It didn't countries. actually. It didn't spread as quickly as we think. It actually didn't. It wasn't widespread until the third century because yeah. the first and second centuries there was a lot of mass persecution. persecution it was yeah. only in the third century, so it but, took but a good. They, they were there. Two. They were there. I agree. But the thing is, Islam. So l l let's look at the wisdom of Allah in regards to the the advent of the Prophet Sallallahu One of the things that people say about the Prophet Sallallahu is that. He took the old fables and the old stories. Now, as you said, he was situated in a place where he was cut off, essentially cut off from the world. How did he know about the tradition of the Jews and the Christians? How did he know he what was, to respond? Uh, he was a caravan trader, wasn't he? He had caravan uh, In his yeah. youth. Not that small. <laughs> he was, that's when he first started off. When he, yeah, when, he was, uh, when he was mature... He was well for his wife, Khadija, and she rewarded him. Yeah, but he, he was... He was up to Damascus and places like that, so he would have had interaction with Jews and Christians. And, and on, there's, there's on religion or trade? On religion, because... There's, no! There's, 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 well, who was the Jews he wrote to um, in, in Medina who um, turned against him? No, he so, was already so, in Medina at the time. So, this well, is after the Hijrah. So, so yeah. there was Jews and Christians already around in Arabia. Yeah, but very not many. There were yeah, more. Many, there were more many. tribes of uh, of Jews in Medina, which interestingly the is because in the yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the yeah in the lower but, parts but there of Saudi. People there that he could interact with. That he, he would. Yeah, like, but Najran, he, he would get their stories, like you said, the the, 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 the what you call the fables. Yeah. He would have got them from those other people, and he was a traveller. Well, you, you, okay, do you really think so? Because look, the, the interesting thing is the Quran actually for the most part, doesn't have the 
orthodox text. I'll tell, tell you look, one look. thing about the ancient world yeah. is that... Um, well, now the, we're looking at the, medieval, the, the medieval world now. Well, well, the, well just, just the ancient world, just yeah. the way that they were. They didn't have internet, they didn't have TV. No, so they, they transmitted. Just, there was, there was um, productions. Storage. People used to stand up and do poetry recitals. Yes. And you had nothing to yeah. do... That, Same in that, Arabia. I'll go and listen to, a, to this Arab speaker. Yeah. I will pick up whatever. Yeah. I'll go and listen to this Christian speaker. Mohammed would have done the same thing. He would have gone around and listened, you know, whatever entertainment was going on. But we have his life documented. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, his life is documented more than anyone else in, in history. So, and not only that, we have the accusations of those who, who in made, the yeah, in the Quran and, and, and in the Hadith, right? So, for example, there is a, in chapter, chapter 6, verse 33, right? Allah says to, to the Prophet, ﷺ, He says, We know that what they say about you saddens you, okay? Now, the context of this ayah is prior to the Battle of Badr. Now, Prior to the Battle of Badr, when the opposing army, the army of Quraysh, came, Abu Jahl screamed out to, or to, the, to the Muslim army and he said, O oh Prophet, we do not belie you. We do not say that you've brought falsehood, but we simply reject what you have brought. This is a statement from Abu Jahl, who is the worst enemy of the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, also his uncle, right? And he wanted to kill him. So this is prior to the battle, right? And there are many aspect, uh, instances with regards to the Quran itself. They asked themselves, where did he get these words from? And they would explain it. They would explain. At first they said they, they got it from this guy that sells things on a bridge, right? Um, but the thing is that guy didn't speak Arabic, but he has an Arabic Quran. Then they said this was the fables of old. Now let's look at the history in terms of the fables of old. The New Testament was not prevalent in, the, in Arabia. The New Testament, the canon of the New Testament was not prevalent in Arabia. If anything, it was prevalent in Egypt, right? Uh, and when we look at Egypt, and we look at the most preserved texts in the, in the Alexandrian sort of tradition, it's not the New Testament, it's actually mostly Gnostic tradition. Uh, they have some, some extra, the Coptics have uh, extra, extra books, I can't remember what they are. Uh, I agree, but, but, they, but, have, that's... but they, they still have the core of the, what, what we have. Mark, Matthew, Luke and John? Um, they didn't. I, I, I they I didn't. Looked, I can't, I can't yeah. Swear to that. No, no, that's one. Uh, but they didn't actually have these, right? It wasn't the, the large body of the scripture was not as we recognize the old, te the New Testament today. So how? Uh, so even when we're talking about the, the Trinitarians, right? And Subhanallah, the Quran actually doesn't just address the Trinitarians. If anything, the mention of the Trinitarians is very small. It's the Gnostics that are addressed more. Right? Because when Allah says, do not say three, He's not speaking just to the Trinitarians. Exactly. Because there are many, yeah, there are many formulations of what the Trinity could have been, which are now all deemed heretics and Gnostics by that time. But Allah is addressing that by saying, do not say three. And when He's talking about, did you talk about, you know, did you say to, your, to the people to worship your mother? Who worshipped His mother? The Coloridians. The yeah, yeah. Third, uh, what do you call it? Early third century. Right, 300 well, years that's, behind, that's before. That's another problem for me because you've got mm. this, this tiny little sect that yes. hardly nobody knows about. Yeah. And Allah makes a specific point in the Quran of saying they're bad. But then you've got the sect of the Christians who do have a trinity and Allah doesn't give, give that, that, so it doesn't say their because trinity is wrong. No, he does. Is, but he doesn't, he doesn't address it as, as widely. He doesn't say Father, Son and Holy Spirit. But, but, but he does, but his tiny little sect, he says, Father, Son, and Mother Mary. No. Or, or he asked yeah. Jesus, did, did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah all right, you're yeah. It's still, yeah. yeah. No problem. Uh, but yeah. but, but that, that, that's a trinity, right? And so he picks out. No, it's that still not a trinity. It's not a trinity. It's a trinity, it's a, it's a trinity of three. No, it's not. Any, any, no, three. no, no. Because he said, uh, Did you tell the people to worship Allah, but also your, what do you call it, your, yourself and your mother? No, as separate deities. Well, well, they are matter. separate. Three. No, but, but it's not a trinity. That's not the trinity. Well, no, it's, it's not a holy trinity. No, but it's not the, it's, it's, it's not, not the trinity, trinity in any not, form. It's not well, the well, unholy that's trinity. What I'm so why, you know? Why did Allah put yeah. that in for this tiny little sect? And yet you say yeah. the trinity of us Christians is wrong, and Allah doesn't. No, but doesn't paint. A, to no, show, in terms of in terms, he's showing this tiny little sect. You're wrong for those. In terms of a direct, he doesn't say we're wrong. In terms of a direct address, because the thing is, Allah knows that for the Christians is about. Jesus. So he speaks about Jesus far more than he speaks about the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. So he addresses every single, when you look at every single ayah with regards to Jesus, it's always refuting the divinity of Christ. Exactly. Every single ayah. This, and he's named 25 times in the yeah. Quran. Okay. So the, you look at those 25 uh, verses in the Quran, which is just by his name. Right. And we're not including the, where he's just called as a, a Messiah and whatnot. Um, 
it's always refuting his, de his divinity. But, but the, the Jews do the same, the, the rabbinic Jews, with, with, with their, their uh, narratives. Yeah, but they, they, they want to destroy Christianity because they don't believe in it. Well, we, so, look, so, of course. Allah wants to destroy you know, the, yeah, the yeah, Christian so, doctrine. So, 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 of course, so, we would see that yeah. after, but, but it still doesn't explain why, uh, you know, apart from, from uh, the Quran, which appeared in, in Arabia, why Allah didn't do anything about this, this uh, religion, which has is, which is led two billion people astray in, in the world today. Yeah. According, according to you, yeah. um, why has he not done anything about that in all history? He has. Well, why didn't he put he, the, the, the prophet in a place where he could actually do some, some good? Well, uh, some we're, we're, still, we're still exploring the, wisdom, we're exploring the wisdom. So the wisdom of Allah in terms of placing Al Rasulullah where he did, making him illiterate, right? What Allah has done is actually remove all the excuses that mankind could possibly come up with to say that he was, that, uh, he was an educated man, that he heard the, the stories of old and, and changed them to suit him, uh, that he was copying a, a tradition. He tells him to recite, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. So, to recite so, what? The, the example I just gave you is that um, for entertainment, people will walk will, will around listen to recitations. So if I can hear what these people over here are reciting, I can hear what these people but over no here are reciting. But no one recited the Quran. Well, Muhammad did, didn't he? They, they, uh, but they, no, they, but no, prior, prior, the question is, how did he bring the Quran about? Yeah. How is the Quran? He's an illiterate man, cut off from the world. The tradition of the New well, Testament. He's not cut off from the world because he's his caravan trader. No. When we say the world in terms of. Wh where was. Well, you go, you go Lola. As as when we say. Lola. Was, was part, was, you know, part of the Roman Empire. Uh, yeah, you're, you're like the, 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 the boundaries of the Roman Empire, right? But yeah, but he would still heard all the stories that was going no. on. No. You can't walk the into thing a is, place in that day and yeah. age and, and be totally ignorant to the people you're doing. No, no, we're not saying he was to completely well, ignorant. Because, because we, we have, why did, we have why the narration. Why did, why did none of the enemies of the Prophet allege that you knew these stories yeah. already? The thing is. Uh, so they had to come up with a theory. No, they did at the first. They did at first, but then they retracted then it. Then they retracted it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We also have documented hadith where the the Arab pagans even traveled to Medina and the Jews say, look, ask these four questions to Muhammad. It's three. A three, sorry. Three questions, yeah. yeah. Three, yeah. three questions. And if he answers this question correctly, he's a prophet. Then he's a prophet. If not, then he's a false prophet. Why do the Arab pagans need to travel to Medina? What's yeah. the need of it? And this is the thing. This is, by the way, we're referring to chapter 18. Chapter 18 with regards to the sorrow, the story of Khidr, the story of Dhul Qarnayn, and what was the third one? What, why are this? Ruh. Yes, we have to Ruh. Ruh, yeah. Why are the stories such as the um, the people in the cave with their dog, which was an old Jewish story? Why does that find its way into Islam? To verify that it's true. Yeah. The, the Quran is the criterion. Muhammad get hold of that story. Yeah, so, so they want you it, was, it was a story. That it was, was folklore there amongst the Jews. Yeah. And God gave this as a revelation. Yeah, but the Jews, the Jews were not, um, they, they, they didn't propagate them, their religion and their beliefs. The Christians did, but the Jews are not, they don't propagate, they don't procrastinate. That's why they yeah. failed, that's why Christ yeah. came. He said, I come for the Jews and yeah. the children of Israel but, first. So, so, they were supposed to be the so, light of the so like nation, he, so like we said, So like we said, and, it, and, it, and the example that he gave, the Jews are telling the Quraysh, the, the polytheists, go test them with these stories, which exactly. means they know that, the, that if he wasn't a prophet, he could not know these stories. Exactly. They tested him and then it was revealed. And the thing is, he, he replied to them through chapter 18 and recited to, to them about Dhul Qarnayn, about Khidr, about the knowledge of the, of the Ruh, right? Uh, and even in uh, yeah, Surah Al-Kaf about the, uh, the seven sleepers, right? But the thing is, he didn't relay it to them in the way that they knew. He didn't relay it to them in the, in the way that they knew. For example, the, the, the fable of the seven sleepers, it's seven. The Quran doesn't say seven. Exactly. exactly. The yeah. Quran actually says, no one knows who, how many, it could have been this. Some say this, some say that. And it, it, it actually expands and it says, some said seven and an eighth of them. And some say eight and the ninth, the ninth of them was the donkey. Uh, it was a donkey, isn't it? Or was it the dog? There, yeah. yeah. and the ninth was the dog, right? And, and in the hadith, uh, uh, Rasulullah he actually expands on it and tells them that these were a people that they were faithful to Allah and Allah let them sleep for 309 years. Uh, this is in the Quran as well. but. And then they came out and they found that the, the, the environment was kind to their, you know, uh, faith rather than hostile to their faith. And Allah left the dog, you know, to, uh, and, you know, this is again mentioned in the Quran, but the dog was left in bones. And then he, you know, made the dog come back to life and again. To, to let them know. And he asked them, how, how long did you sleep? We slept for a day or two, but it was 300 and, sorry. My apologies. My apologies. Um, I'm, that's why I'm drinking water in between. Yeah, I should have water. Well, 
My apologies. Yeah, a lot of talking, yeah sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the, the Quran actually it, it doesn't just say yeah. By the way, yeah, you know that story of the seven sleepers. Yeah, that's what it was. No, it it gives it, it responds to it in a way that no one would respond to. Respond to it is, if they were false, and the Jews they could not say he was a false prophet. We have other instances, like when Did the, the Jews know about these stories because the Hadith came later than the Quran. No. And by now the the uh, Arab invasion had taken over. No, no. Lots the, of land. the the chain of narration is to the pro, to the Prophet peace be upon him. So the the tradition yeah, is the a chain of narration, but but actually right. No, 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 no. It was immediate. This is why, like in terms of the. Well, not what I've heard from I know what other you. Muslims. <laughs> I'm not concerned with. Yeah, no, fair enough. But I'm not concerned with other other Muslims. I'm talking about evidence. The evidence is is that we we have it um, uh, we have it documented that some of the companions would scribe the hadith in their own uh, copies of the Quran of the Mus'haf. So we knew it was being documented straight away. Now we know that the Prophet peace be upon him he forbade documenting the hadith while he was still alive while the while the revelation of the Quran. The wisdom behind that was because he didn't want the people to confuse hadith with Quran. So after the Quran ceased, the revelation of the Quran ceased, people started to document the, 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 the hadith. Hence we found it in their manuscripts. And even some extant manuscripts that we have today, we see some hadith written in the margins, right? But Uthman, when he you know, collected the, co the codices and burned them, burned them, it was to ensure that none of that crept through, right? That it was only the Quran. But the hadith tradition, like before Bukhari, which came 200 years later, we had the uh, the the the, the uh, Imam the Muwatta of Imam Malik. We had, uh, I think, uh, Ali radiAllahu anhu. Yeah, the Sahifa of Abu Bakr. These are all hadith down at the time of Muhammad or shortly after. Yeah, uh, like literally, like because Abu Bakr died two years and are they after. All sahih? Uh, yeah, oh. in terms of the. Um, Traditions that were written in there, so most of them are authentic. Yeah. Now, obviously, Bukhari came with a more strict um, criteria uh, to establish the authenticity, but the people knew how to transmit. That I, I saw you, I met you, I transmitted from you. And you know, Bukhari, he was so stringent. That the famous story is that when he went, he travelled to it was it Iraq, I think, and he wanted to collect a hadith from a man, and he asked people, "Where is this man? Where is this man?" He finally found him in the field. And the man, he was bringing the sheep, making them think that there was food in his hand and he was opening his rocks. And he, and he walked up to the man and he said, I came to collect a hadith from you, but then I saw that you lied to the sheep. I've not taken this hadith from you. That's how strict it was. Because you lie to an animal, you could lie to me about the tradition of the Prophet. That's how strict our tradition is. And it was, and it, it was similar to that, not as strict, but it was, it was still strict through the transmission. Now, was it transmitted word for word, as the Prophet say, said? Not necessarily. Yeah, the meaning in terms of the hadith is the meaning more than the actual wording. Which is why we have, uh, which is why we have an authentication system for the metan itself, the content of hadith, as well as the chain. Um, so in terms of the tradition of the hadith, it has been, it's, a, it's as much alive and as early as the Quran itself. Can I ask you one hadith? That, that, sure. I, that I know, I just, just want yeah, yeah. to explain it. It's, um, it's in Bukhari, but I don't know the number. I can't remember the number. I don't worry about it. One, but yeah. it says, uh, Muhammad says, uh, both in this world and the next, I am closest to Jesus, yeah. son of Mary. Yes. So, so why does he put Jesus, son of Mary, as the example that he should be close to? If I say, I, I'm out of all the footballers in the Premier League, I'm the closest to mm. Messi or whoever, no. whoever's the best. That means I'm putting them up as, as the, 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 the mm. example that everyone should follow, and then I'm saying I'm the closest to that example. Mm. Well, well, the well, prophets, because they're brothers. Yeah. The, the prophets are brothers, okay? Surely, in Islam, Jesus should be following Muhammad. Yes, but this is why, so this hadith has a dual, uh, a dual meaning in terms of this world. The closeness is not just that they are brothers and that they brought the same message. It's the fact that they are the closest in terms of timeline. So there was no prophet between Jesus, peace be upon him, and Muhammad, peace be upon him. There's no, there is, there's nothing in between. There's a direct link between them two. So that's why he... It's just the passage of time that, that Muhammad is talking about. That among other things, right? The message as well. And when, we, and when you see the Quran, it's, it, it, it talks heavily about Isa alayhi salam, correcting what has happened, okay? And the beliefs. So this is very important, all right? It doesn't talk about Musa alayhi salam that much because there wasn't as much corruption in terms of 
what happened with Musa alayhi You see, when you see the, the Mosaic law and the Sharia, you see a massive similarity, but you see a massive disparity between the message of the New Testament and the message of the Quran. So, so Rasulullah is, is, is pointing to the fact that they are close in their message, not as, di as dissimilar as the Christians think they are. The secondly is the passage of time. And there is going to be no prophet between the death of the prophet, peace be upon him, and the, reser the return of Isa because the prophet, peace be upon him, is the last messenger. They are, they are close because the only prophet that is a companion of the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is Jesus, peace be upon him, because Jesus, peace be upon him, met him while he was alive. That's what makes a, a person a companion of the Prophet. Where did they meet? In the heavens. So on the night journey. Right, okay. Yeah. And because we don't believe that Jesus, peace be upon him, was crucified in the first place or died in the first place, he was risen alive, as mentioned in chapter 4, verse 158, and he was situated in the second heaven. So when the Prophet, peace be upon him, ascended on the night journey, he met Jesus, peace be upon him, while he was alive. Therefore, them being companions. So he's drawing yeah. this comparison of how close they are. It only brings me, brings me back to, to my hmm. problem that I've got there. That, that, uh, you know, like you said, uh, Christianity is so different from Islam. Yes. How did Allah allow this to happen? You know, to me, hmm. it's a continuity of the message. In salvation history goes all the way from, from Genesis, hmm. all the way through the Jews. But, the Jews were, were supposed to be yeah. the light of the world. Yeah. They didn't. So yeah, they, Jesus yeah. gives the parable about the owner of the vineyard who sends all the his... The parable of the tenants. Uh, yeah, yeah. All, the, all the people to come and give the message. Hmm. They kill him and he says, I will send my only son and they kill the son. And all that, so that all fits in with salvation history for, yeah. for us Christians. Yeah. And then we, we get Islam, which seems to take, take, the, take a, Yeah, it, it, take go, it goes back. But the uh, thing is... Why, why did Allah yeah. allow this, you know, all this time with, with so many Christians to, to get the wrong side of it? When, when everything that God has done, Allah has done up to then, is, is about salvation for mankind. No, but Allah has, Allah has revealed the message and He told the Christians, as He told the Jews, preserve the message, right? Pres preserve the text. And it was because, and as in chapter 5, verses 13 to 14, Allah mentions that because they forgot their covenant and, be, uh, you know, and uh, betrayed, you know, betrayed Allah, essentially. I'm paraphrasing here. Um, Allah, what do you call it? Um, what do you call it? They, they ended up corrupting the scriptures in meaning and in text. Yuharrifuna, again, that word yuharrifun comes up again. In the text. In the they, text. They, they corrupted the actual, the, the actual text. text and the meaning again, right? So they did the same as the Jews. So what, what's that? Quran verse, chapter 5 verse uh, 13 and 14. I don't know where, where it's, you have, yeah. you have bring, it, bring up inshallah. Yeah. Huh? The, the, te the text you have between your hands. See, now this is actually very important because Allah makes a distinction between the revelation and that which is between your hands. When Allah refers to the original revelation, He says, Anzala, right? Anzala Torah wal Injil. He brought down the Torah and the Injil. But then when He refers to your scripture, He says, What you have in between your hands. But that's what we must judge by. So again, that, that's, that's no. a problem. No, let's look at that verse. Let's look at those verses again in chapter five, verses 46, 47, and 48. You got it up. We'll bring it up, we'll bring it up. Let's go, let's go to five, th verse, chapter five, verse 13 and 14 first. And then we'll go to chapter five, verses 46 to 48, inshallah. My phone does not work for some reason. I've got the Hilali's translation, sir. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What's the verse? Oh, no, mashallah, this is nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've got it here. Mm. Chapter 5. 5. Verse 13. 13. Whoa. 13. Well, no, it's let's, gone back to 4. Yeah, it's gone back to 4. <laughs> so it doesn't like Christians using Muslim apps. <laughs> <laughs> it sabotaged me, so it's still going to 4. That's very weird. All right, let's look at it here. Uh, five, 5, what number? 13. 1, 3. 1, 3. Yeah. I've got a couple of translations up, so... That's fine. Well, we'll look at the... 13. So I've got Sahih International and Yusuf Ali. Sahih International. Sahih International. Yeah. Either of them is fine. It's got the Arabic there. Mm -hmm. you know, like I said, it's a Muslim app, so... No, no, that's fine. <laughs> no, that's good, right? So, Allah mentions here... So because of their breach of their covenant, because they breached the covenant, we cursed them and made their hearts what, grow... What is he talking about here? We'll, we'll find out in verse 14. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So because of their breach of their covenant, we cursed them and made their hearts grow hard. They changed the words from their right places. Okay. So again, we're looking at the um, So this is the word in question, which is... Actually, if you press it over, then it gives you the translation. Yeah. Um, uh, this one here. Right. Oh, that's a, that is pretty cool. 
See, from the, the words from the rep, oh, so it goes through the whole thing, yeah? So they distort. Now this word in distort, it means in text and meaning as well, right? It says, al kalam in an So the, the words from the right places and have abandoned a good part of the message that was sent to them, right? And you will not cease to discover deceit in them except for a few of them. But forgive them and overlook their misdeeds. Verily, Allah loves the good doers, al muhsineen and then it goes on to verse 14. And from those who call themselves Christians, we took their covenant, but they have abandoned a good part of the message that was sent to them. So we planted amongst them enmity and hatred till the day of the resurrection. Right, so this is, so when you ask us, why did the Christians become how, what they are today? That's why. They have broken the covenant. They have abandoned the message. So Allah left them to it. That's what they between. between yeah. uh, they forgot a portion, a portion of that which they were informed. Uh, so it doesn't say, you know, to forget something is, 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 is mentally to forget. It's, it's not the, the actual text. So, so it still goes back to that phrase and saying that what, what's between their hands, that's what they should judge by. No, so this is chapter, this is verse 46, right? But those verses are about the Christians, right? So 546, yeah. We'll look at 46 to 48. Same sort of, yeah? There we go, 46. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'm not going to read the Arabic to save time. Yeah. And in their footsteps, we sent Isa alayhi salam, the son of Mary, confirming, confirming the Torah that had come before him. Yeah. See, now let's make a distinction here. It says that came before him, not what was present. Exactly. Yeah? There is a distinction. Well, not, not in this revelation. one, but in other ones, no. the, the Jews are told to we'll, judge. We'll clarify. Uh, the that's one of a very specific thing, because the context of that verse was regarding the punishment of adultery. Which is stoning. Yeah, but so Allah says, why do they come to you when they have the when they have it in their book? If you're telling me to judge by a certain court, then then you are telling me that court is a good court to be judged. By. No, 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 not that, not that court. So they said, yeah, well, that, that's, yeah. that, that's their Torah. It's, it's their law. Yeah, so, you know, exactly. that, that's their it's their law. It should have made it 